Okay, it's Goy from SEOsUnite.com. Uh, we're here for part two of the three-part tutorial about how to scrape with Scrapebox, or how to get started scraping with Scrapebox. Um, in the first part, we covered a little bit about how to set up Scrapebox, how to get things to the point where you can start harvesting. In this part, we're going to go over what are known as in-URL footprints. What in-URL footprints are, are sections of the code in the browser bar here that will lead you to find places that you want to spam. Or uh, a better way of wording it is, let's say that you want to find all of the vBulletin forums or a good number of vBulletin forums out there. You're going to look for little pieces of um, you know, footprints here, little pieces of uh, in URL uh, footprints that will that will sh deliver you to those vBulletin forms. You know, there's a phrase I'm searching for, I just can't remember it at the moment, which is not a big deal. Um, but anytime you navigate in a forum, you know, you get little little sections of uh, I guess you could call it even code, but it's not really code. Um, you get little footprints here that'll deliver, that'll show you, you know, what the different parts of the form are internally to that form. Okay, for instance, let's go back to the beginning. Here's the home page. Uh, Index.php would make a horrible one because there's a lot of uh, different CMS types out there that use Index.php. Uh, but if you actually navigate into a form, uh, a subform of the entire form itself, what you get is you get this nifty little footprint here, form display dot php question mark f equals. Okay. Now if we go back and we click on a different one, you'll see the same thing, form display dot php question mark f equals, but instead of an 88 like it was last time, now it's a 2. Okay, so you can see the only variable that changed in between those two subforms was the number after the equals. So that is a footprint that will deliver you to the subforms of vBulletin. So if I'm making a complete list of vBulletin footprints, I would grab this section right here, including the slash, I would copy it, and I would put it in a notepad file. Okay and I keep on collecting. Now these footprints will only deliver you to the subform. If you want to be delivered into the thread, okay, you'll see the thread has a different footprint entirely. Show thread.php question mark t equals. Okay, and I would copy this because this is yet another telltale sign that's a vBulletin installation. Okay, um, now let's say I want to find profiles. Now some profiles are blocked from public view. We'll see if this one is. I have no idea what that said. <laughs> Anyways, um, you'll see to get to the profiles, it's member.php question mark u equals. Okay, I'd copy that and I'd put that in. If we scrape just the member.php question mark u equals will land on profile pages, which a lot of people scrape for profiles. So those are some examples of vBulletin installation uh, footprints. And you'll see uh, from installation to installation there are small differences. Okay, we're on a new form now and you can see that this show thread does not have the same formation as the previous show thread. It does not have the t equals. In that is an interesting lesson. These f equals, t equals, and u equals are oftentimes independent of how the installation is set up. Uh, for instance, if you go to seosunite.com, there is no such thing outside of the f4. That's because I have things set up to eliminate a lot of those footprints give me the most SEO friendly URLs. Uh, but not everyone does that. However, as you can tell, there are, are multiple different ways in which they're structured. A little tip is if you want kind of a universal standard, you will always want to go to the CMS homepage of the 
uh, CMS you're targeting. Uh, vbulletin.org really isn't. Uh, vbulletin.com really would be. So we can go to that. And if it's a vbulletin installation, which it may or may not be, uh, it doesn't look like it is. Let's go to the forum. Here we go. Actually, yes, this is a basic vbulletin installation. It's a perfect example of what we're talking about. Um, this is a very generic install of the CMS and will give us probably the cleanest footprints. Let's click on the subform here to find out. Interesting, you'll see it's different than what the previous ones were. However, we still have the form displayed on PHP. So what's the lesson in that? Let's go back. The F equals, T equals, and U equals are completely optional depending on the installation. So in this case, while these footprints look great, I'd actually remove these other elements, and that will give us the cleanest footprints to scrape by. Uh, same thing, let's go to a user and see if they're public here. They just happen to be. Remember .php, same thing that we already have. And we clean the U equals off it, so now we have the broadest, best possible footprint for these installations. Now, I didn't collect all of the examples. I just collected a few examples for vBulletin. Let's go to another CMS and see what we can find. I'll just back on out of these and go over to Google. WordPress is a common installation that people like to look for. So uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to use what's called an additive, wor additive word footprint. Um, to get us going on the in URL footprint and see what we get here. Uh, the Powered by WordPress I will explain in the third video of the series, but uh, if we can get lucky we may find a stock installation which would give us the best answer. Unfortunately we are not that lucky here. Let me go way back to page 8 and see what we get. Go on to page 12 even. All right, now these are presenting a problem. It's a common problem that you'll have. But this date is a pretty common uh, in URL issue with WordPress, which is why it's sometimes ineffective to try and collect in URL footprints on some CMSs. However, you know, you can obviously tell this is a blog setup. It just doesn't have anything you can, you can grab readily. And it, it's just typical of these situations. Uh, you know, we'll try another one, see if we get lucky here. Uh, we'll try a couple more. All these WordPress.coms, these are all WordPress installations. Uh, there are multiple, it, it's called, it's kind of like uh, multiple user type things, but WordPress.com is the home site for WordPress user blogs. And you can see they all share this date element, another date element, uh, very common. Uh, this, <laughs> how funny that we were just talking about penis enlargement in the other video. Um, you know, so those date in URL elements are very common uh, amongst some CMSs. And that's why you need to know both in URL footprints and additive word footprints. Uh, once you have those footprints, which unfortunately I lost, but I happen to know, uh, show thread dot PHP question mark. What you're going to do is take what you had harvested, go back in scrape box. Well, let me abort this if I can. I was cleaning them from before. And you will type in URL, because that's where you found the footprint, paste it in there, and then you can begin harvesting based on that. Uh, even though we haven't tried the proxies, let's see if we have any luck. Looks like we have no luck. I really should have tested the proxies. Unfortunately, I didn't have the chance to. Uh, but what will happen is they will begin to populate in this box. And just like we discussed before, you can remove duplicate URLs or duplicate domains, and there will be your harvested uh, list to try to build links with. Okay? So those were in URL footprints. They're pretty easy to understand. They're just footprints up in the browser bar. 
basically of the CMS. I mean, it's not too complicated. And this has been video two. We'll catch you in video three.